Okay, welcome back. We're talking about the range problem. So there's really nothing wrong with taking it this way and saying, okay, so the score was less than, and then whoops, if not, the score is less than, oops, it's not, oops, it's not, oops, it's not, and then finally you figure it out. Now, in this particular case, they chose to start at the low end of the scale and move up. That, that's fine. I chose to use starting at the top and move down. It doesn't really matter, right? As long as you're consistent. Okay, I mean, you can't mix them around. If, if you start at the top, it's going to have to be, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, right? If you start at the top, it's going to be 90, 80, you know, so you can't mix them around. You can't change the order, but once you pick an order, you have to stick with it. Now, I probably wouldn't take off any points for this, and this is perfectly okay. It's just that it just gets a little clumsy when you're coding because every time you did one of these things, it indented and indented and it just kept going and kept going and kept going. I, I try, this sounds a little silly, but I see this, this there's a, a little red line here, right? There is, it's barely visible. But um, <clears throat> I try to keep everything within the red line because the red line is how much it's going to print, okay? That's like the, that's like in the old days, it would be column 80 of where when you, when you print something, you don't want to scoot over the edge and have a, you know, a new line come back. So I try to make everything fit within that little red line, okay? So that technique works, but here's a better technique, and that is the one that we did, where we have an else if, else if, else if, and then the last one is just gonna be in a, a plain old else because <clears throat> we don't need one at the very, very, very end. Okay, so let's talk about the rules for, for solving the range problem. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I would recommend you use the, the is, if, else if, that would be a, a recommendation, not a rule, but a recommendation. And then you can start at either end of the, of the scale. You can start high to low or low to high. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. And then the rest of the conditions have to be in the, in the correct order. So if you're going high to low, they're going to have to be high to low. <clears throat> and you'll most likely end up with a trailing else, which you can use as data, like they did in this one and I did in mine where if it's false, then you bound to be a made an A. Or you could use it for input verification to go, whoa, 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 you didn't actually mean to type in a 200, did you? You know, because that's not a valid uh, score on a, on a, for a grade. Okay. So <clears throat> here's some examples on page 130 of kind of sort of what we just did. Uh, so it's a, a test, except... Uh, I don't particularly like this one because they're not using curly braces and they're using those stupid uh, message dialog boxes, which I'm not using in this course at all. Well, I will when we get there, but not in advance. Okay, kind of makes sense. So kind of look at this example and instead of using the J option pane, just put in system, you know, out and then put in curly braces because I require curly braces. <coughs> so <clears throat> the next thing we're going to talk about is logical operators on page 134. And so, yes, there's some logical operators, an and and an or operator, and then a, a, a not operator. The not operator just says, take whatever it is you, you've come up with and just reverse it, okay? So let's talk about and and or, because this gets a little confusing. If I walked up to the counter of at McDonald's and I said, <clears throat> I'd like a hamburger and a Diet Coke, how many things would I walk away with? Two. So and means I get more, right? If I said I'd like a Diet Pepsi or a Diet Coke, how many things are going to be walking away with? One. So an or makes things smaller and and makes things bigger. Okay? That kind of sort of makes sense. Okay? The problem here is <clears throat> that when you're doing these kinds of things inside an if statement, if I was to say if the temperature is greater than 40, and, so, and is, is going to make this thing stronger, bigger. I, I'm kind of running out of terms to describe it. So, and makes things bigger. But the problem is, you're putting that inside an if statement. So, whenever the if statement becomes stronger, the amount of data that's going to pass through the filter is going to be smaller. In other words, you make the filter bigger, make the filter stronger, then less data is going to come through. So, if before you had this much data with your if statement coming through, 
and then you throw in an and statement, it's actually going to make things smaller. The amount of data that gets through gets smaller. Okay, that kind of makes sense. So you need to know that, let's say if I said, if the grade is greater than 84 and half the class was in that, and then I said, and the you know first name starts with the letter F, am I gonna get more students or less students? Well, think about it. Obviously, I'm gonna get less students. So adding an and statement makes the filter stronger, which makes my, the stuff that passes through smaller. Okay, kind of makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> okay. So when we come time to doing opposites, this one is an easy one. What's the opposite of and? Well, it's or. Okay, that's good. There really isn't an opposite for not because it's already an opposite. That sounds a little crazy to say. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, an example of one of these things and then I'm going to, <clears throat> so I'm gonna say uh, if temp is uh, less than 40, and, whoop, that's not the and sign, <clears throat> and score greater than or equal to 88. Uh, let's make it 78. Okay. And then do something. It uh, doesn't really matter what it is. Okay. So this is a, a, one of those compound kind of a scenarios. And if I told you in a quiz or on a homework assignment that I wanted the logical opposite of, of line 69, what would you do? Well, here's how you would do it. Now, pay attention here, guys, because I absolutely positively guarantee this is going to be on the quiz. In fact, it's going to be on the next few quizzes. It's going to be on the midterm. It's probably even going to be on the final exam. So pay attention. So here's how you would get the logical opposites. You would say if temp. Now, what is the opposite of less than? Well, it's greater than or equal to. What is the opposite of and? Well, it's or. What's the opposite of greater than or equal to? Well, it's less than. Okay, now you've done the logical opposite. Because sometimes you're getting out here, and let's say, you know, I don't know, you're trying to figure out some if someone gets a discount. So you know, you're at the um, at the ticket booth, and someone comes up and they say, well, I'm a veteran, and uh, I've got this coupon. So veteran and coupon. Okay, so he gets 5% because he's a veteran, and he gets 5% off because he's got a coupon, so he gets 10% off, right? So, if, But if you wanted to know if it was the opposite of that, well, then you'd have to kind of, you know, if it's not a veteran and you don't have a coupon, right? So that kind of thing. <clears throat> anyway, uh, print LN, logical ops. Okay, so this is kind of sort of important that this is uh, just a made up example. And then here is the logical opposite of that example. Now, the reason I like this as a test question, because it tells me that you actually understand what you're doing. And so I like questions that, that tell me, do you actually understand what you're doing rather than just floating at the top, you know, nodding your head going, yeah, okay, dude, whatever. This tells me that you actually understand what's going on. So <clears throat> one more time, I see on line 69, I see two comparison operators and one logical operator for a total of how many? Three, three operators, okay? How many of those operators need to be converted? Two, 18, 41, two, one, three. If there's three operators there, you're gonna to need to convert three operators. Okay, good. <clears throat> let's continue. So let's use this as a way to do some input validation. <clears throat> let's say, for example, down here, I wanna prompt you for your age. Okay, so I'm gonna need a scanner, remember that guy? <clears throat> scanner keyboard is equal to no scanner uh, system dot in by the way I typically just wait for the machine to come up and say hey what you really want that and, uh, and so I, I I typically don't go to the top and fix it because the machine's gonna fix it for me so I don't bother okay cool so now I have a scanner 
So I'm going to prompt somebody for their. So I'm going to say system out print without the LN. And I'm going to say um, enter your age with a colon and a space. Yikes. Okay. So you remember how this thing works. I'm going to go ahead and say int age. And I'm going to combine the two together because I just kind of like doing that. Integer dot parse int. And this would be a keyboard next line. Okay, you guys remember this is the way I do it. The way the reason you know I've told you this before, but the reason I'm trying to tell you to do it this way is it becomes more portable. It, once you learn how to do it this way, when you move to practically any other language, you're going to go, oh, okay, I know how to do that. Using the the Java specific technique is perfectly okay in the abstract, but I'm trying to teach you how to do things portable. So that when you move to a different language, everything continues to work and you're not sitting there going, I don't understand what's going on. Okay, <clears throat> so then I want to check to see if the age is decent. So I'm going to say if age is um, less than zero or age is greater than say like 140, then you probably aren't, have typed in a bad number, don't you think? System.out. Print L in. Um, that's an invalid age. <clears throat> okay. So this is the way you do input validation through these series of the combination of comparison operators and logical operators. So if the age is less than zero or greater than 140, then clearly something's going on here. So let's just run this. So enter my age and I say, uh, I don't know, minus 40. Whoops. Minus 40, it says, no, that's invalid. Cool. So let's try again. This time I'm going to enter my age at, I don't know, 55. It's, okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is the way you do input validation. You should check to see if, if something is within an acceptable range. Kind of makes sense. Okay, on page 140, they talk about operator precedence. So uh, we kind of sort of talked about this, but here are the order in which things occur. So um, a negative number, that obviously has to happen really, really soon. And then multiplication and division, addition, subtraction, and then the comparison operators, and then the equals, and then the logical ends, and then, of course, the assignment and combined guys. Okay, so assignment is last. In other words, if you're assigning something, you know, answer equals and this gargantuan and long thing, all the math is going to happen all first, and then you punch it in. So in our example, I did not have to go through here and put an extra set of parentheses. Now, it's nothing wrong with putting an extra set of parentheses. I mean, you could do this. It's not like it's illegal or anything. Right? I could. But I don't need to because... If you go back to that thing, the comparison operators are going to happen long before the OR statement, right? Remember this guy? So the comparison guys happen long before the OR. OR is almost last in the list. So I don't need to put in parentheses to be able to pull that off. Okay, so again, if you want to put in parentheses for extra, you know, clarity, then fine. You know, that's great. I'm not going to take points off. I might comment about it, but I ain't going to say anything else. <clears throat> so sometimes you can skip parentheses, and sometimes you're going to have to say, no, no, I really, really, really do need to um, <clears throat> put parentheses here to make it come out right. Okay, the next thing on page 142 is talking about comparing string objects. Now, this is complicated because, of all, you know, remember it's not one of the primitive data types. Remember that? And so primitive data types, it's pretty easy to say, is age equal to 42, right? No big deal. But I can't say is, is uh, you know, first name equal to Bob. That, that doesn't work. Okay, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark, and I'll explain why.